Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Tuesday, September 22nd. The responsorial psalm for today's Mass comes from Psalm 119. This psalm is the longest in the book of Psalms, but today's selection only contains six of its verses. And as we look at the entirety of Psalm 119, we can see that this piece of sacred scripture praises God for giving such splendid laws and instructions for people to live by. And the author also glorifies and gives thanks to God for the law, prays for the protection from sinners enraged by people following the law, and begs for wisdom to understand how this law affects their lives. So here are the six verses from Psalm 119. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commands, for I delight in it. And I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. Every time I pray with Psalm 119, I'm truly inspired. I just conclude I just need to follow God's law, the words of the prophets, the instructions of Jesus Christ, the teachings and precepts of the Catholic Church, and everything will go great in my life. Easy, right? Well, if we're truthful with ourselves, our lives are definitely more complicated than just following God's law. Because all of us have to contend with the effects of concupiscence. And if you don't remember what this word means, concupiscence describes the inclination towards sin that each of us has because of original sin. In baptism, we are cleansed of the original sin, and we are united to the body of Christ. But the effects of original sin still linger in our lives. Practically speaking, this reality means that we struggle with darkened mind and weakened wills. So these two realities, the darkened mind and the weakened will, cause us to do things we know we shouldn't do. We rationalize our sinful behaviors. We do not, do not put up fights against sins that are present in our lives. And sometimes we do both these actions. We don't fight, and also we try to justify our sinful behavior. So the question for all of us is how do we combat concupiscence? How do we push against it? Well, first and foremost, prayer is the most important tool to control concupiscence. The relationship that we form with God through prayer changes us. So we don't succumb as easy to the temptations that comes from our thoughts and our desires. Secondly, since we have bodies, we have physical realities that cause us to sin, the church also recommends that we do fasting and observe penances in our lives. One of the reasons that the church asks each of us to fast and do penance is that these practices help us to learn how to control our will and help us to understand more fully in our minds the effects of our actions. So, for example, many of us know that Meatless Fridays is not a huge burden, but this action of withstanding from meat usually challenges us to look more fully at our lives. How are we living? Are we indulging in too many things? Are we aware of how our actions affect others? So prayer, fasting, and penance are all means through which we can fight against concupiscence. I do need to give probably one warning though. Too much fasting and too much penance can actually cause us to dislike these practices. And I know sometimes we want to do heroic things for the Lord, but we also have to be careful because going too far can lead us to have a negative reaction to those realities. And also we have to remember that fasting and penance is supposed to be done in a joyful way. As Jesus tells us in the Gospels, no one should know when we are fasting except for our Heavenly Father. Therefore, each of us are going to have a different reaction to fasting, to different penances. As a result, Psalm 119 reminds us that we just need to constantly discern, 
constantly work in our prayer to understand where God is calling us to follow him in our lives. And we can do things that are different than other people. We can find our own way to do fasting and do penance. And furthermore, sometimes if we're struggling in these areas, we just need to reach out to faithful people. We need to find support and examples that help us to understand where God is calling us in order to live these realities out in our life. Because we need to fight against concupiscence. We need to make sure that we're constantly pushing against this reality in our lives. Now, as we conclude today, I think I return to what I said at the beginning. Discipleship should be easy, but it's not. We should be able to follow the precepts of the Lord, to follow his law, to listen to the teachings of Jesus Christ, to listen to the voice of the church. But again, it's not as simple as that because our lives are affected by concupiscence. So if anything, we need to remember that Jesus Christ is always with us throughout our journey in this life. He is always ready, willing, and able to not only forgive us of our sins, but help us to go in the right direction so that we can understand where he is calling us to serve him and serve others. So our job is always to push against concupiscence and to never despair, never give up, but each day commit to making sure that we are trying our best to follow Christ and to follow God's law. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.